internet friends, welcome to another episode of the Synergy Cafe online show featuring speaker, entertainer, close-up illusionist, and marketing alchemist, Magic Brad. It's the internet lifestyle show about career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. We're moving the online chatter over to real life activity. And now, please welcome your host of Synergy Cafe, Magic Brad. Hey, Internet friend, Magic Brad here, Synergy Cafe on the Synergy Collaborative, and I'm doing another interview with my friend Dorothy because a topic came up that we wanted to talk about, and it's uh, somewhat to do with this crazy election and what to do after it. So, Dorothy, you there? I am here. Yeah. How are you doing, Brad? This will be fun to talk about. Yes. <laughs> so it who wants be. to start? Um, so um, the the last time that we spoke, I gave just a, t a tiny little teaser. So, um, you know, when people are talking about what to do after this election, you know, half the country is, you know, jazzed and happy and half the country is like, oh, what just happened? So uh, this is really for those folks in the what just happened uh, side okay. of uh, of our country. And, you know, we, we all do want to come together in some way. And so it's important to be able to figure out what what's that invisible thing that's getting in our way that we're tripping over. Does that make sense? It, it does. And I think what a lot of people don't realize is, like we talked a little bit about, is what just happened was because of some marketing techniques. That's how a lot of it ended up happening. You wouldn't expect it, yes. but it did. I mean, he was tweeting. He was using Twitter. I use Twitter for my marketing. I don't get any traction. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so uh, so just to kind of segue from, from, from the last time that we spoke, the 2016 presidential race was, in fact, a triumph of one moral model over substance. And that moral model that triumphed was carried on the wings of well-crafted, marketing and branding. And while progressives and Democrats may not yet know it, the substance and the moral model they already hold dear, plus inspired marketing and branding is one of the important keys to winning back not just the presidency, but the House, the Senate, governorships and state houses across the land. And I think they want to do that because you see people and they're just like eyes wide open. What are we going to do? So well, that's what we're definitely, talk about. I think for sure that's how a lot of this happened. If you think about it, uh, Donald Trump's been involved with media and leveraging yes. media, and and uh, he utilized um, like hype and controversy and stuff to get attention, and did get attention, and uh -huh. that's the way the Kardashians do it. Uh, that that is exactly <laughs> right. Uh, he has been on television more over the past 20 years than any, than any other 10 politicians combined. He knows uh, the, the rhythms uh, and the uh, habits of uh, media. Uh, there's a very good reason why he tweets at 2 and 3 a.m. That's when the, early, the folks who run the early morning TV and radio shows get up and get into the studios. He wants sure. to make sure that his tweets are the first thing they see in their day. And that's what <clears throat> that's how he gets to you know set the tone for the day. He um, I I don't get the sense that he's a brilliant strategist, but he is uh, very effective at at choosing what's the next thing I can do so all the attention is on me. I think he probably knows who to hire, <clears throat> who to work with, who to leverage. That kind of thing, too. Yes, yes, yes. He's he's clearly good at that. Sorry, I need a sip. Me too. This is this is my uh, wisdom cup. <clears throat> this Sometimes duck. I can always. I have a oh, duck cup. A duck cup. And it says, "Pick yourself," which is that's exactly what I did. Oh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Okay, so now where do we go? So, uh, so. Uh, what what is that that moral construct that uh, people um, assent to or or not? So around the it, it turns out here's what the research shows, uh, and I was fascinated with this because as uh, as a research and science gal, <clears throat> you can do research and science in all kinds of of areas. I was always just so curious why it is that uh, our public conversations about the life of the nation and political direction, they pass like ships of the night or they crash, you know? 
<laughs> Ooh, that uh, that is it was a mystery to me, and why uh, the same set of words and messaging thrills some people and d- repulses others. So so what's behind that? So uh, it turns out I'm not the only person who has asked this question. And people who do linguistics and cognitive science uh, for for their profession, researchers in that field, have done a lot of uh, research on that. So what the research shows is that all politics is founded in a concept of the family and, um, or pardon me, I skipped a step. All politics is has a moral foundation, and all morals are founded in the concept of the family. Uh, around the world, there are a handful of family models. So just for contrast, um, in the Far East, they have this reverence for elders that we just don't quite get here in the West, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, the two, the, here in this country, in the West, uh, there are two moral models that dominate our culture and uh, and our politics. So uh, one is called uh, a strict father model. It's uh, hierarchical. It's gendered. Uh, there's the father. There's the mother. Uh, there the kids are uh, you know at the bottom of the totem pole. Uh, in in this model, uh, the kids are born bad, and and it is discipline that. Uh, that helps them internalize uh, good behavior. Uh, and having good behavior is the, the criteria for whether you uh, are, have become a moral person. And, and the, the evidence that you become a moral person in this model is that, uh, that, you, that you've done well in the world, that you've become wealthy. And this is uh, one of the reasons that wealthy people are considered to be, you know, highly moral from this perspective. Now, if you don't hold that model as dearly, it'll become obvious, you know, you'll see the logical fallacy there. But people who hold that moral model very dearly, they don't see that logical uh, fallacy because uh, that's the way our brains work. (laughs) So to summarize a little bit with the the, the title or what we talked about is what to do after this crazy election kind of thing. Right. So are you suggesting perhaps what to do is to get savvy with marketing to be able to make your side more prominent, maybe make some shifts or? Yes, yes, because what uh, the conversation, the public conversation around morals and values have has been dominated by the strict father model for 40 years. And, uh, and uh, these are people, uh, you know, on on the right of our politics who tend to be business people. When they go to college, they study marketing and business, and so they're good at that marketing thing, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah, they're they're good at it. It's the, part of their, you know, uh, professional DNA, so to there speak. There is a shift that's hap- been happening over the years, and that's more female energy and dominance is coming up. You're seeing more and more female entrepreneurs and millionaires and successful CEOs and things of that sort. So yes. that's where it's happening. It didn't quite happen at this election, but it's going that way. I can I can feel uh-huh. it. It, it. Part of the reasoning I put into it is today with the internet and and being able to click a mouse, there's not that need for muscle anymore. There's more need for integrity and, and uh, knowledge and wisdom. And I think the female nurturing part of it, that's what everybody's looking for. They're looking for nurturing, not discipline. And, uh, and, and the, the idea that you can uh, spank people uh, uh, into uh, good behavior does work for a while. Uh, until that that deeply held part of you that that uh, external uh, physical discipline has suppressed cannot be suppressed anymore, which is why from time to time we see these crazy articles about you know you know uh, uh, re- Republic- Republican men uh, doing things in the men's room that you don't normally expect to happen there. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't say any further. This is a no. this is an R-rated this is a PG show. Program. <laughs> <laughs> it's R-rated. Don't go any further. No. <laughs> so, so by contrast, the the other moral model uh, that that dominates our 
or culture and politics is a strong nurtural model. You know, uh, there's the mom and the dad, but uh, they're they're not hierarchical. They're they're co-equal. Uh, and they have to take good care of themselves because wimps cannot raise good children. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, and they take care of themselves and they nurture their children so they can go out and do in the world all the good that they can do. Sound familiar? Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And so it's not hard to see. You know, now we hold both of these models generally. And the question is, in what context do you hold one model more dear than the others? And I'll tell you, as a strong, neutral kind of gal altogether, uh, uh, it's not the only model I have. If I show up to a Schwarzenegger movie, I understand what's going on there, right? I can have fun with it. It's kind of a fun click flick. I call it bang bang. Um, and if somebody gets between me and my kids in a way that is dangerous for my kids, this mama bear is coming out with all guns blazing, you know? <laughs> and being from Texas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, metaphorical guns, typically. I do shoot, but it's at the range just from time to time. Okay. Um, but it's, uh, uh, you know, those two moral models, uh, you know, on, uh, on the right with the strict father model, they've been... Uh, talking about that for a very, very long time, out loud and in public. And this year, for the first time, at the, you saw it at the Democratic uh, National Convention, uh, they started to get their values voice, which is great. But it does take time to build that and to build those metaphors in. So so back to our topic, which is what can normal people do? Perfect time. Uh, I was going to say there's only a couple minutes left. Okay. So uh, let's summarize that. What What can we do? Yeah, what can we do? So, so the thing to do, I mean, after hearing this, you'll know, uh, you know, which side you're on. And the simplest thing to do is is to call. It's to know what your values are, to know what it is that you want, and to call on a regular basis your representatives at their local district office. Don't call the Washington office; it's ineffective. Uh, they get way too many calls. Uh, don't call the. Uh, don't send emails. Don't uh, do Facebook or Twitter, even on their pages. They don't pay any attention to that. What they do pay attention to is that very human thing of picking up the telephone to the local, the most local district office you have for your senator, your congressman, your state representatives and senators to let them know what it is and engage that conversation with them in a way that is respectful, is clear about what you want them to do and keep calling again and again. Just put a reminder on your, uh, to call once a week or something Uh, and develop that relationship. They'll carry water for you. I suppose you also endorse maybe going to local events, community events, things of that sort. That that's right. And I care about this from a leadership perspective, because it is one thing to be able to do that. uh, And it's another thing to be able to do it in a way that really engages people who may not necessarily agree with your perspective. And building that relationship really is a leadership quality. Well, with that, I'm going to sign this one off and we'll put it in the can and get it up to the Internet. And uh I appreciate you've taken the time for both of these interviews, and then we'll get these out and collaborate and get them out to the world. So, so, uh, that's great. Uh, one one wrap up thing: sure. uh, if folks who want to get uh, 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 my free gift related to how to how to do this can text to four four two 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 the word progressive. Four four two 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 progressive. Yes. Uh-huh. So, it. so you know, you open up your app, you put in four four two two two, and then in the text box below, just type progressive, hit send, and you'll get it. Okay. Perfect. I awesome. appreciate it. Thank you very much. You bet. You well. Thank you.